the span of the cultural gap between the United States and Germany can easily be measured by the terminology that concerns this standard Baroque opener, what in the land of liberty is pragmatically called page one, circulates in Germany as ex ordiale minimal cadence. Anyway, on both sides of the Atlantic you're faced with the danger of boredom by two stereotypical figuration when converting this into music. Well, fair enough, but maybe I'm gonna disperse that texture a little bit. the term figuration prelude you probably think of the most obvious examples. And what about pieces like this? This one. Well, what I'm trying to say is that there is a lot of different textures that fit my understanding of figuration preludes. It doesn't have to be just broken chords, right? And it's of course always fancy to have a rather diversified texture that includes a certain horizontal perspective. Back to the page one. When practicing preluding I try to internalize an opener like this by transposing it to several major and minor keys. It already becomes a complete musical sentence when a formal cadence is being attached like this. After that one could try to attach more cadences or a sequential episode. Here is a major key example. Next level includes a primary modulation and a recapitulation of the opener in the new key. In the following example I'm aiming at the 5. can't talk on baroque preludes without talking pedal points. Another common upper voice leading is that. I know that's actually just a page one variant. To create a short and simple prelude the ascending upper voice motion could be contrasted by attaching a descending sequence. Now my idea is to show a prolonged final cadence by stretching out the diminished 7th chord on the sharp 4. But I'm doing that in another prelude and that's gonna go down like this. Same opener but this time in minor, then 3 times a 7-1 and then a long sharp 4 leading to a doppia. Let's go! <laughs> You can 
see that I organized the arpeggio by a certain sequential grouping in three modules. There's actually countless possibilities. Here's an alternative version. There is another very popular pedal point opener that includes a digression to the four and that's sometimes called quiescenza. A procedure that can be seen from time to time is to put a simple imitation pair above an opening pedal point. Well, enough on that, let's just check out another opener. For example, the 1-5 pendulum. Here's a little prelude to demonstrate how this opener reappears on the 5 to create a simple musical form. Now I show how to apply that opener's pattern onto this kind of sequence. Whoever tried to convert this essential three voice fabric into a figurative multi voice texture knows that you get into trouble, as the sequential aspect gets into danger of being demolished. So my solution is to distribute the suspensions to both hands. Sounds like this. Now the animated version. On the Romanesca I put the 4398 chain completely to the left hand. Let's ramble a little more on openers, as this is a topic that I neglected badly on this channel. As I don't have another name for this one, I just call it the 13251. And if you want to give it a fancy label, how about calling it the Kunau, as I drew it from a figuration prelude by him. Again, a very popular opener. For example, it initiates this Bach prelude, and you won't believe it, it's even in Chopin. Well, one more example and it'll make a good article to expand your publication list. At least give me a little credit in the footnotes. No! Okay then, back to business.
Now I'm pulling out a real classic by following a recipe that shows up right at the beginning of Robert Gerdingen's famous book, the so-called Gallant Romanesca combined with a printer, which is some sort of weak cadence initiated by a stable four and that admittedly took me a while to understand what it's actually about. First the scaffolding. Figurated. Now same thing in minor, but the printer is prolonged by 7-6 suspensions. Now I'm gonna climb through the whole stepwise Romanesca, attach a 251 and then modulate to the 5 as well by using the printer. And we're gonna spend the crunch time with this little fellow. Now play a 5-6 chain. Ah, now that is a challenge. To me it's actually indeed a challenge. I always had the opinion it just doesn't lend itself for figurative keyboard textures due to that kinda stiffy three voice scaffolding. Now a basic but acceptable animated version of that embedded into a little prelude. But then out of nowhere it just came into my hands, the double suspensions. Love at first sight. And figurated example. After that I began to realize that the ninth could as well be put on top of the descending 7-6 chain. And now are you feeling a certain moral discomfort because of the staggered parallel octaves? Come on, here's the final figurated example, thanks for watching. Okay, who made it up to this point deserves a little easter egg. The following footage proves that I had this very sequence in my hands already. The thing is that the recording date says it's from August 28th 2017, so exactly 5 years ago. The video covers a kind of messy and harsh unmeasured prelude improvisation that I recorded within a practice session at the harpsichord that I took as minor subject besides the piano in my music theory masters. I normally would avoid to push such a poor recording on YouTube but in this one I'm making an exception because I find this an interesting document as the named sequence pops up just right in the middle of it and since then completely vanished from my memory. Have fun!